what is up friends YouTube and motorcycle enthusiasts accelerate out here in Bedford Kentucky getting ready to do the Saddleback Extreme first time and uh, yeah My friends, we are off. This is Sear Round 5 2021 Saddleback Extreme in Bedford, Kentucky, as I mentioned before. Now, this start, not my best start, but honestly, I don't start fast anyway. I, it's not worth the risk to me, and I know I'm probably going to be in the back anyway. Um, I will say that the, the way that this um, promotion did decide to or this club rather, did decide to do the starts, um, was basically gold, silver, bronze, iron, uh, all in a straight line, um, dead engine start. So at this point I was in the iron class, so everybody, for the most part, the other classes was were in front of us. So it did work out pretty well, I think. Um, you know, there's a lot of different formats and different ways that uh, they can do the starts, but the start was good. Um, just got on it and basically trail rode, uh, which is kind of what you see here. I'm just kind of trail riding, um, start getting into a little more technical stuff as we get into the woods uh, and some of this up and down, which obviously gets more technical as uh, time goes on. out for a leisure rod. <laughs> what, 25 feet? So this first creek bed uh, was really a parking lot. It was the first major bottleneck um, in the race and you probably saw initially on that downhill there was a little bit of a bottleneck but that wasn't much uh, just maybe 20-30 seconds for dudes to clear out this was much different so it's a pretty technical rock section uh, going up a hill there's a lot of bottlenecking I will say that it is pretty slick here um, in Kentucky the rocks were pretty slick and uh, yeah the, the <laughs> The clay and the ability to get traction, you definitely had to be um, ginger on the throttle to uh, to get through that stuff. So I'm essentially just kind of getting up in the pack here. I started looking things over and uh, seeing what I could possibly do to maybe gain a couple positions here. So uh, 
definitely not easy to maneuver uh, for you guys that depend on a crowd like this through, um, you know, the crowd. So, uh, definitely not an easy task. started to make their way around um, the constant cluster of people that didn't really seem to be moving, I made the decision to do the same. So um, looking later at the, at the SEER rules, you are actually allowed to um, traverse bottlenecks uh, and, and to go around them within, um, within a few feet. I, I do want to say it's 20, and don't quote me on that, 15 or 20 feet. Um, in, in the spirit of, you know, obviously staying with the intended portion of the course. Uh, some guys went ahead around to the right. I actually, once I got um, up and past a few folks, and you can see some guys um, getting after it there on the left, I dropped back down into the rock section to continue uh, the intended portion of the course, which was actually really fun if I had a run for it. Um, one could probably clean it. I don't know if I could have, but uh, it's possible. But you know, with the bottleneck, you're you're kind of stuck, starting and stopping. Downhills. That caro is training, boy. Dropping down into this creek bed, and that's really the tail of uh, Saddleback Extreme to me is so many creek beds, you know, the rocks here, they're a little more jagged, a little more sharp. I actually, whenever I listened to American Hard and Dirt's podcast, Will had mentioned he seems to get a flat here every time. Um, I, and I, you know, after listening to the podcast and taking a mental note and writing it, I do see what he means, the rocks, it's kind of shaly and the rocks are kind of jagged. Um, but yeah, these creek beds were a lot of fun. They were definitely they would definitely be more fun if I wasn't uh, usually completely gassed. Um, but overall, it's a, it's a great time. They have great terrain here in Kentucky, and uh, I definitely look forward to coming back. So I did not expect that at all. I saw that obstacle, um, I saw the guy there uh, chilling and I was like, oh man, perfect time to get around this dude, I'm just going to get through this thing. And uh, yeah, I definitely would have given it a little bit more speed and probably a little more front tire lift had I known that it was going quite that, uh, that drop off there on the other side. It worked out, but uh, it was definitely a little bit of a pucker moment as, uh, as my front tire basically goes dived. Oh no, another parking lot. I've had to pee for like 30 minutes. Yep. 
total noob moment as I went after a gear and hit neutral. I totally would have had that too. I felt confident, had good speed going in and uh, just uh, grabbed neutral. So this is me back down at the bottom of the hill, um, turning around for a re -tent. So I come up on these guys and I'm kind of, I don't really know what's happening here. I'm kind of blown away and then I actually see what uh, what they're dealing with and it's, as I mentioned, this, this dirt is super slick. It's just pure grease and towards the end of the video there's actually another spot where I, I can't even stand up on it um, with my Liat Enduro boots that actually have pretty good tread on them. Um, I'm just super, super light on the uh, on the front tire and just on the that just taking it really easy shit. right here and as these guys were obviously they didn't you know they kind of crept up on them as well and uh, it what got I so I was taking it easy through here hill. and I got through it uh, without um, eating the side of the hill which I talk about not wanting to eat the side of the hill. That was probably my favorite obstacle in the in the entire course. It was so cool, and uh, you know everybody was wanting uh, everyone to kind of go right for that straight line, drop down in, and go straight. But you know, whenever I yelled at one of the dudes, I was like, "How deep is it up there?" And he says, "Oh, not bad, about 18 inches." And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, "Shit, man, that's like two feet deep, or very close, right?" So uh, I was a little hesitant. And uh, I cut it out before, obviously, I started this rock section, but um, another dude just just nails it perfectly. I think he was in bronze and gets ahead of me and gets past, but uh, he hits it perfect. And I was kind of looking at where his bike was wet on the side. It wasn't quite as deep as I originally um, had thought. So I still took the safe line, which it worked out good, making up that, that rock section. And uh, this dude here was a lot of fun also. You know, this technical riding is um, really, really what I enjoy. And it's the stuff where, you know, for me, um, I think that, uh, that a lot of people can make time. Um, you know, as long as you're hitting the hill climbs and getting through these technical sections, just consistently, not, not necessarily, um, you know, you don't have to be cleaning it, everything all the time. Like here, you can see I'm struggling with this route. But as long as I'm staying consistent, I, I'm having a good time, and uh, this is really what I enjoy.
crazy. That's important. So this one kind of caught me off guard and I don't know why because I saw the incline coming and there it's another common theme here with the Saddleback Extreme is whenever I come at these hills I don't have um, the, I don't quite have the aggression that I need and you can see there I got it in the reattempt and uh, I struggle with this hill right here as well also um, you know it it's, it's more the same theme that I really need to work on my launch and being just comfortable letting that 300 do what 300s are supposed to do. Yeah, they love great. Yeah, they're, they're light bikes and all that, but I have a tendency to under throttle and try to, um, I don't know if it, just maybe get a little too technical and a little too light with the throttle on some of these bigger climbs. And oftentimes the bike will do it. I have the traction. I just need to get in it and load that flyweight, uh, flywheel more. Um, and some of it too is body position. I think, you know, if uh, a lot of times people, and myself, I say people, but internally my fear is nobody wants to loop it out. So you can either do one of two things. You can either stay really high on the bike uh, up top or that's on the throttle so I think of my body position plays a role in that as well so I struggle with this here for a while I actually spend longer than what the video needs to fighting this log here and then I'm walking it up um, to this section right here I should have cleaned this and been up the up the trail um, and I would have had the momentum to, to get up over that instead of um, you know, risking that rear tire not making it, so I just kind of ghost rode it up to uh, to ensure that I wasn't in another situation where I'd be fighting the bike again.
See? Look at that. For the pass. You going? Okay. Oh yeah, real nice. Down goes Frazier. Of course, the only time that I actually crash in this uh, entire race is during the downhill. But um, I tried a little tail slide there to uh, get the tire, rear tire around. I got a little turn the front um, the front end in a little too sharp, and it, it bit me. So I even mentioned it. You know, trying to be cool. So I ate the grass. Didn't hurt. No biggie. Uh, kept moving, but I was annoyed that I went down. this up uh, up here and it's uh, it, again it comes down to getting better with my hill climb so I stalled it out kind of and took it to the left of the trail there so that I could get a I made it up the first portion you can see the other guy there to the right trying it tried it couldn't make it couldn't make it I ended up going back down the hill and uh, what I should have done was stayed up there and well, kept really attempting because I had a good spot to try. It was slick and yeah. it wasn't at an angle, but it was still oh. better. I ended up coming back down to the bottom and trying a couple of different angles to attack this thing. Yeah. And uh, they all just ended up being uh, failures. out all the failures um, and just make it look like I struggled a little bit with this hill um, and then you know eventually worked my way up working the angles but this is the kind of uh, stuff that that I was doing that really it was frustrating for me but at the same time looking back on it um, these are good lessons learned uh, these are definitely you know attempts and, and, and reflection of things that I need to be doing better or thinking you know, not even from a technique perspective just making better decisions you know being in a position and choosing a line or choosing making a choice of either you know trying to work my way up a hill or re-attempting and you know sometimes working working your way up a hill is valid sometimes a re-attempt is valid and I think um, the more times I'm in these types of situations the better I'll get at it and you know it's just really gonna cost me time and sweat and, uh, and that stuff so right here to the right I'm actually I work my way to the right and then I'm going back left and finally end up where I originally was probably 30 or 40 minutes before that and what do you know I'm starting to make it
that I think of too is um, traction and understanding traction. And I think I really do think it's where my trials bike is going to come into to play as I ride my trials bike more and actually, you know, attempt to perform trials techniques and, and focus on that. Understanding traction and what your bike can do. Uh, being able to move the bike around and manipulate it in low traction situations is honestly a large part of this slow technical stuff. Even if I'm stuck on a hill, um, you know, the, more, the better understanding I have of the, of how, you know, if I'm going to be able to make it will help lead to those decisions too. So I'm really excited to ride trials more and I actually have a, a trials video coming up for you guys that I've been also working on and uh, looking forward to that. some tunes. This is greasy as fuck. I did it. I wanted to get fit. You're in my class. I've been here for half an hour. Yeah, have fun. Yep. Remember earlier, whenever I was talking about so slick that I couldn't stand up on it? Yeah, this was definitely the side, side hill right here. 
Um, this was, <laughs> you can see me trying to dig in. It was pure grease. There was nothing I could do about it. But I knew the end was near. And by the end, I mean the first checkpoint. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I accelerate. Have, re have reached the first checkpoint in a Seer Hard Endurer race. So uh, I'm pretty ecstatic about that fact um, that I actually make it before the time expires. And uh, just under, just shy of three hours too, so it was a monumental uh, win for me, which, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> this is all good fun. It's all, you know, I'm new, it's fun, it's, this stuff's beating me up, I'm getting smashed like most of the way. But uh, I gotta admit, it was a really, really good time. And uh, I was cracking these dudes up as I get rolled into the into the checkpoint, and uh, we were all just like high five and like you know we didn't DNF. That was the goal. No DNFs. So I arrived at the checkpoint at about like minutes, two minutes bro. or uh, two hours I'm and forty-five coming. minutes, right? So we knew that this was yeah, kind of like right. the last obstacle before the you, checkpoint. Man. And the Do way it. these work you is your, your time, your total time, you is actually calculated off of checkpoints. So you could literally, if we um, it up, you know, ride five to six it. miles, and if you don't make it to the Your checkpoint before the time runs out, then. <laughs> Your time Damn, before like that fuck. is what is counted for your actual score, your placing. So, um, me and another strap. dude walked back, and there was a, uh, a there couple of folks that we saw coming through this last portion. You know, we were letting them know that, hey man, like, you know, we're about to run out of time, like, we'll help you. And uh, in, in these sections, rider assistance is, uh, is allowed. So, we dug deep and uh, helped these dudes out. Got it. Yeah. I went. I bulldogged it just to the left of the rock, but you might be able. To... Oh yeah, dude. That is fucking grease right there. You got like five minutes, dude. Yep. Stay as high as possible. Oh, fuck yeah. You got it? Woo! Well, where's the little first lap? Oh, you're on second lap. Now there's a nice track. All right, my yeah. friends, that wraps up the Sear Round 5 Saddleback Extreme in Bedford, Kentucky. I've got to say, I had an absolute blast. Um, looking forward to doing more Hell of these yeah. and getting out there and uh, you know, challenging so myself, and that's what it's all about, getting better and uh, you know, riding my dirt bike in uh, some extreme terrain. And I uh, hope you guys are get a chance to get out there, get on two wheels, ride a dirt bike. Let's accelerate once again, signing off. Yeah, buddy. You got like two minutes. You take me. Three, four. Yep. Yes, sir.